All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome back from a freaking hiatus. Like, it's been like a month and a half. This is Cosmic Source. With your boy Electronic Jack, a.k.a. Linwood Storm. He's not even the main host yet. He always goes first. This is King Grimm, the actual host. I'm, I'm Riddick. I'm Riddick. <laughs> He's Riddick. You, Got my own spinoff. You want to be the star. That's because Vin Diesel is full of himself. Well, Vin Diesel's not in charge now. The Rock is. It's it's The Rock so now. <laughs> He's going to be Riddick? No, The Rock and Jason Statham are going to be the stars of a spinoff, of a, of a uh, Fast and Furious spinoff. Oh, God. But if you if you remember the original movies, they weren't the uh, main characters. Huh. Well, yeah. Walker and um, what you call it? Paul Walker and Vin Diesel were, weren't they? And Ludacris. Yeah, and then you had uh, Crimey River Tyrese. <laughs> Man, the whole squad like just broke up on some bullshit because Tyrese is having a lot of troubles. Basically. And then, like, Why is this happening to me? I mean, he started calling out all of his fucking co-stars. Like, who fucking does that? Like, yo, you you straight up got fucking uh, was it Aunt Vibbed? <laughs> you get you straight up. Yeah, and he, I I don't understand how anybody could sympathize with her. She did that to herself. She really did. I mean, and she keeps doing it too. It's ridiculous. Just stop. Damn, like, people want to see you during the, the Fresh Prince reunion, you know, the photo and like shit. Like, she said, she said just apologize. I Even mean, the game had enough balls to apologize to 50. Right. But either way. It didn't get him anywhere, but still. But yeah, Suicide Squad, held to pay. All right, so, Suicide Squad, held to pay. Right off the bat. Fantastic film. Fant- I loved it. I, I think this is where... The DC animated universe, the new animated universe. Sorry, uh, not that the old. New Fifty Two animated universe. The new Fifty Two animated universe. This is where they need to go. This type of directing was just it was pretty damn good. Like, so I'm gonna say it. I'm directing as in what? Because my the movie was not without its flaws. Oh no no! The voice directing was just mediocre. I'm sorry. The voice acting was pretty good. Sorry, not, the, not the voice acting, the voice directing. Oh, the voice directing yeah. is it, it, hit or miss. You know, some of the some of the jokes didn't land for me. You'll have a pause and an awkward pause here and there. Yeah, and then a joke. And I was like, ah, it doesn't work for me. But you know, it wasn't it wasn't all bad though. It definitely the the movie kept pace. But um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it. I I didn't I don't like most of the new Fifty Two animated movies. I think they're all okay. He's mad because they outsourced to Korea. Not even that. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm dead ass. Like, I just don't like they're. Oh, you're, you're past that now. I, I mean, it's whatever on that. You know, they're still making American properties, whatever. But I'm past the American, you know, like the Korea thing. But yeah. like, what I think of the movies overall is that I feel like they've been holding back, like. I feel like they've been holding back on the action and focusing more on the stories, but they're forgetting this is comic books. Like comic books have a I'm lot just of surprised people. that they went all out. Yeah, exactly. The and they they killed a lot of people. Like a lot of people died in this movie. It, they it, they killed off, I'm not going to say it, but she these are pre- pretty I can say it. She she freaking died. Who cares? Spoilers. Okay, I, can can I spoil it? Yeah, spoil it. So he's a black lightning villain, and they killed him off with ease. Oh, that person! I was not ex- Tobias Whale. I was not expecting him to go out like that. You know, I didn't expect it either. In fact, I thought I thought honestly the movie was gonna have more Tobias Whale in it. I was like, well, they just took him out. <laughs> I mean, it would have been smart from a. Black Lightning perspective, and then I have a Black Lightning ca- cameo. But yeah, there were quite a few deaths in the movie that I was like, "Whoa!" Yeah, oh, the beginning. David Ayer, you screwed up. You should have killed off like these motherfuckers, like the Jester and his friend. Who was who was the Jester's girlfriend there? What, what was her name? Um, 
God, I, I forget her name. Um, Funny thing is, they are act, they are actually old villains. They're very old. There was there was a punch and knockout, I believe. No, no, punch and knockout were later. I'm all I'm thinking about. Okay, they were later in the film. Um, I'm talking about uh, what you call it, the early ones with um. Oh, you're Virgo. talking about the. I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, with Vertigo and um, what you call it, a Jester and one more. I forgot who. No, nope, I was right. Punch and Jewel. Punch and Jewel. Jewel. Julie. Julie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Was, yep. Punch and Julie were cool. I mean, Julie. Her death was like, O.D. I was like, I actually kind of feel bad for her. I didn't. She was fucking with Amanda Waller. You don't do that at all. But at the same time, she's like, yo, don't let her blow my head up, son. And Dead side felt sorry and then yeah, shot her. Yeah, shot Mercy her. kill. And he's like, turn off the bomb. You know Amanda wanted to blow that bomb up. She was just like pressing that button. I was like, Wow. Yeah, it was really like out there, and you and right off the bat, you see where these movies have been. Sorry, going. I just got to say this, David Ayer, you screwed up. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. And David Ayer could have made this movie. One of my biggest complaints after watching this movie, and it wasn't about this movie, it was about the David Ayer Suicide Squad movie. Is that is that I know that David Ayer could have made a live adaptation of Hell to Pay. If you've seen a David Ayer film, you know that he's capable of doing it. So, Warner Brothers, I'm mad at you. DC, I'm mad at you. I, I mean, just yeah, he's he's good at doing bad dudes on a mission. That's his yeah, Harsh Times, Street Kings, End of Watch, Sabotage, especially Sabotage. That movie was brutal. Yeah, so he can do it. It's just you know you gotta have <coughs> you you gotta have you know a company behind you and also a good scriptwriter. The company, DC, you know, just to get off track here, they cut that movie to shit. And seeing what what Suicide Squad could have been and coming together as an animated movie must have felt like a kick in the balls. Yeah. like Especially because it was an original animated movie, not based on any source material. Yeah. And that's something you could do with the Suicide Squad. Just find a really, like, find a dark topic. This is, like, something, that's something that the the, the, the movie should have done, but it just, like, focused on using Enchantress, who's, like, the least interesting. And the cringe were, honestly, that was faithful to the comic book because the first villain they faced was Enchantress. And Incubus? I'm not sure about him, but I know... Enchantress was definitely their first villain. I mean, they haven't been faithful to the comics in any of the other adaptations, so... Oh, you you didn't like Batman v Superman? No. <laughs> Either way, they haven't been faithful to any other, you know, adaptation in any other DC view. I, I, honestly, Suicide Squad by itself, even without... So I said one of the flaws of the live-action version was the fact that all the other, you know, movie villains, uh, all the other villains of the heroes are characterized by their showdowns with their heroes. You know, Captain Boomerang is boring as shit without the Flash. Uh, Deadshot, who is Deadshot without Batman? And I disagree. I disagree, I'm sorry. Well, I mean, they're characterized... I, I've read a lot of Deadshot graphic novels, so but he, 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 he in... works on his own. He has a very interesting story on his own. He came a lot in of good. as a Batman villain, though. And like, if yeah, but he works him. on his own. He, he Trust me. Hitman, uh, daughter that he had from a prostitute. He has a lot of interesting aspects about Absolutely. I think him as a character. Honestly, one of my favorite of the Suicide Squad. But what I'm saying... If like, honestly, I was reading one graphic novel, and when Batman came in, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> Let, but, keep Batman out of the story. But what I'm saying is that in order to introduce him to an audience that knows nothing of Deadshot, because the movie-going audience that saw Suicide Squad, I think maybe I'm going to just take a random shot and say, like, maybe 40% of them saw the DCAU. But otherwise, a lot of them didn't know who Deadshot was. So, you know, Honest, I, Again, honestly, I, I don't think that... I don't think that uh, showcasing Deadshot as a character... 
is that hard to do. I don't think showcasing. They could have done a lot better than they did, but they gave you the gist of it, they, which again they could have given you more. They honestly, they didn't really like. Okay, they didn't need to do any of the things they did in the movie. To be honest, and this is where Hell to Pay kind of comes in. Hell to Pay does really brief like vignettes for the characters, and they don't spend a lot of bullshit time trying to develop them. You know, like the story's always moving. It's yeah, so yeah, but at, at the same time, because we were talking about how the characters would need to be introduced properly, because right. without their heroes, they're nothing. But you could say the same thing about Hell to Pay. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, but the thing is, like, they chose a route in the live action that it it, it was forced. They decided to go what, what I said, you know, showing them against their heroes. But these characters are more than just you know. Oh, I got caught once, and you know, then they're gone. Instead, yeah. Hell to Pay chose the road of actually fleshing the characters out via vignettes, and it made more sense. And yeah, you, you got to hear conversations without flashbacks. Exactly. Which was my gripe about David Ayer's Suicide Squad. That and his flashbacks weren't consistent. You would get a flashback with uh, Katana or, uh, you know, a lot of Harley Quinn flashbacks. A uh, dead shot flashback or two, but no flashback with Killer Croc. Oh, because he was, and he's a major Batman villain. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, who's Killer Croc to the people who don't know about him? That's kind of the flaw of that film. And um, like I said, the way Hell to Pay handled it was giving you a couple vignettes, and yeah. you know, like it didn't spend a lot of time on them like Suicide Squad did live action did, which. Uh, Again, it took ten minutes to introduce everybody. It it was pretty bad. It was pretty pretty horrible. And and some I mean, the, it was treated like the audience was stupid. And then some of the backstories were withheld because surprise, you know, El Diablo. Later in the movie, he gets his flashback, but he already had a you know like a video showing him barbecuing people on the yard early in the movie. So it's yeah. like, like why did we need that part? You know, it was very mishandled on the whole, like, exposition thing, trying to... And, and Suicide Squad held the pay, I I think, took the better route Whew. on fleshing them out. My bad, I'm a little bit tired. Uh, work in the morning. So, um, another thing I wanted to talk about... that money. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I mean, I'm making rent. So, another thing I wanted to talk about was, um, what you call it? the the action this is the part in most of the new 52 animated beautiful yeah it was actually very good in most of the new 52 animated movies i see the action as eh budget in i mean it's not as fluid as you know older dcau cartoons were not at all but in fact it, it the animation still has some problems yeah but for the most part, compared to something like, say, uh, Teen Titans vs. Justice League, this was a massive improvement. I mean... It was. It the, was. The action scenes, like, compared to Damian Wayne tripping the Flash, which I still have trouble believing happened, something like Bronze Tiger vs. Deadshot in a hallway, or Deadshot versus a whole house of dudes, is way more... Sp- be- speaking of... Believable... Speaking of, that's why another reason why I didn't like the David A. or Suicide Squad movie and why he would have been a better fit for adapting this story. This story felt more grounded. Yeah, because it didn't... It, it more had, grounded for a story that relies on a magical card. I mean, MacGuffin. It is what it is. But, um, yeah, I'll get to the um, story. Uh, what you call it? Uh, yeah, I, I felt like the action, the action was a lot more believable and a lot more fun to watch. Like, some of the, the moments were just like, oh shit, you know, finally you get, uh, something like Killer Frost using her damn powers the way they're supposed yeah. to be used. Or, uh, Deadshot. Oh, and an- guns. another thing before I forget, these were fucking villains in the movie. Oh, yeah, none of them. All right, they weren't, oh, we're the bad guys. Don't forget, guys. 
Yeah, they were actual villains, like Harley Quinn. They weren't trying to be portrayed as anti-heroes or anything like that. Remember the scene with the like the the security guard frozen. Harley Quinn just basses, like just knocks his head off. With yeah, the bat I was actually going to mention that for yeah. fun. An innocent security guard, like I was like, oh, wow, that okay. Yeah, they made sure that uh, she retained her psychopathic ways. And it's pretty good. Um, I like that the characters were consistent. Bronze Tiger was like, I'm not having none of y'all shit. Deadshot was... And that's kind of the one of the bigger points where this movie succeeded and where the live action failed. Um, it anchored itself in one character. And that was important. Like This movie yeah. has a ton of characters in it. It has a lot of characters. Each of them get their own little time, to, you know, so you can get development and figure out how they are as characters. But one character with a secondary and an antagonist gets all the shine, and that's Deadshot, Bronze Tiger, and Zoom. Everybody else is tertiary. They get their yeah. little moments to shine and everywhere, and like nobody takes up too much screen time. But the story was more about Deadshot. It was more about Deadshot and what Deadshot can get out of this mission. And with the ending, they actually chose not to screw him over, which I thought was great. It was surprising. It was surprising. Yeah, I was like, whoa, finally. He's actually free. Yeah, and I can't wait to see what they do with him next because he's got other things to do. You know he's not going to stay out of the trouble. For they'll, they'll probably make another Suicide Squad movie where Harley Quinn is the leader. Yeah, and Deadshot's probably gonna, you know, be around Gotham City for some reason or another. Because he's not yeah. gonna stay out of trouble for long. Not at all. Because if you remember, they're working on a, I think it's a, an adult Harley Quinn movie. Either it's a movie or a series. I think it's a movie. It's an animated movie about Harley Quinn. And that just Not the sounds... Bruce Tim garbage that we, <laughs> that we got. Which is an official movie in the DCAU. So you're will, you're willing to bring back these characters from the DCAU to make a movie like that. I can see you had an issue with that movie. Have you seen it? Nope. Uh, I, I'm not interested yeah, in Harley gotta, like that. <laughs> I mean, but you, but you love the DCAU, right? Yeah. Because it's technically a part of the DCAU. The DCAU is over. No, it's not. And Harley you Quinn is not going to bring it back. It's not over. It's, I mean... They're actually it... talking about bringing back the Justice League for a movie. That's interesting. No, it's not. I don't want it. Why? It ended perfectly. No, it didn't. Like I said, if you're going to make an animated movie based on DCAU characters, make a Teen Titans movie. Hell no, they're not even DC. Te- yes, yes, hell yes. A team that was referenced, but we never saw it. Yeah, but the thing is, like... You already have Static, you have you have Tim Drake. Beast Boy was actually referenced in uh, in Static, I believe. But they're not gonna, they're not gonna, like... The ending You're afraid of they'll Justice ruin League, it. I'm not afraid they'll ruin it. I would like a Justice League Unlimited, don't get me wrong, with all the principal actors back in their, their places, but uh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that, to be honest. There's there's a lot of... It's... it's there's a lot of things... It's that territory that they haven't, haven't touched upon, you know? I mean... For me, it would make the, the DCAU complete, if they do it properly. I think we need to move on to the Young Justice universe for that. I mean, I'm I'm sorry, the Young Justice universe is not DCAU. It's not. It's not, and and I think the DCAU, while it ended, because I remember the last episode of Unlimited, it was just like they released all the villains, and it's time to do it again. The adventure continues, type ending. Yeah. I I'm, I don't really fuck with that in any sort of media. It pissed me off in Inuyasha the first part. And it pissed me off there. It's like, well, it's not really an ending. Like, yeah, the same thing with Teen Titans. That makes me angry that they didn't really get an ending. Um, so, yeah, no. Well, I, they went to Tokyo. That wasn't the actual ending. 
See, the problem is season five came after Teen Titans. And, no, 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 that was Jason John. Wait, did, I think the movie came after yeah, the, the show. Yeah, the, the movie came after so the ended, show. Yeah. So it was technically an ending, huh? There you go. Sort of. Because I remember play like a... season five ending after Teen Titans in Tokyo. I swear it did. But... I I don't I don't think so. Uh, I mean, I'm looking it up right now. Like, I don't know why, but I feel like it did end after that. 2006. Check what? the exact date because it said. Uh, I'm I'm looking at the exact date. And Let's then see. the show. And then the show last season. Yep, the movie. The movie yeah, can... served as a series finale. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. So there you go. Still doesn't answer a lot of questions from season five. It ended. It ended. It didn't end with season five's, you know, cliffhanger. So, that's all I'm saying. It's all Robin I'm saying. and Starfire got together. But Terra returned to life. We never in the got movie. The end. No, in season five. Remember the final episode. I mean, if it was important to them, they could have wrapped it up in the movie. It wasn't. You're not getting that ending. Or rather, a proper ending to that. Yeah, see, it was meant to go on. But either way. No, it wasn't. That movie was meant to end it all. To, anyways, to, you know, go back to Suicide Squad, we got a little sidetrack there. He, he did in denial right now. No, we're also on a, you know, podcast about the Suicide Squad movie. That is true. That is true. It's either here or there. So, you know. Uh, back to uh, pretty much the, this movie was pretty fantastic I thought it was fun from beginning to end uh, I don't really have that many gripes about it other than maybe they could have explained why Waller wanted the card but I think their subtlety in that was actually better I mean they kind of did explain it yeah they said you know you lost weight and whatnot, and she's over here like hey I need that card no, did, did, didn't you see the scene where she was like, it was, I forgot what the machine is called, but when the, they scan you. So it kind of implied that she had cancer. Oh. I yeah, go back, go back and watch that uh, scene. Okay. Um, so it's implied that she had some kind of yeah, disease, was... which would explain her weight loss. Wow. They managed to explain it without having to explain it. Almost like they're I got to give, I'm going to give a point that oh it's almost like they treated you smart i know right yeah it's really interesting but um what you call it i I felt like the movie did well on all points it improved on the action the action was good i mean honestly i think they should take it further from here uh they definitely need to work a little bit more on the animation some shots are still kind of janky um, stiff, I would say yeah, stiff. Very stiff. Uh, Phil Barassa's designs—they're better in this movie. They're they're a lot better, but I still have the issue of like same face going on. I not What's a that? fan when characters look the same. Uh, if you look, uh, if you looked at Phil Barassa's designs, they sometimes look like good. an anime. No, no, not even close. Come on. Anime has, much like Disney, they have distinctive features for their characters. So you'll know what, what character is who, generally. Uh huh. Of course, two characters from different animes can have the same features. But in that anime that you're looking at, a lot of the time, because the features are so exaggerated, the characters are going to look different by from a glance. Yeah. And in Suicide Squad, Hell to Pay. You know, some there was differentiation to the characters, but if you you know didn't know better, some of these characters look like they could be related. It's kind of it's kind I of, did, I did not even notice that to be honest. Take a look; it's kind of uh, it's kind of off putting. But I will be watching the film again this week. 
yeah, you know, like he, he's definitely. So I'll, gotten I'll better. take a look. He's definitely gotten better, but it still needs a little bit of work. So, but overall, I I give this movie a pass. If I was to give it, a but would score, you say it's the best in the uh, DC, DC animated, animated movie universe? Yes, yeah. definitely, it's the best. Like it's it's the only movie out of the whole entire DC new Fifty Two animated universe movies that had the balls to, you know, take risk. Like, it went for a Oh, so you didn't like the uh, Flashpoint Paradox, which they actually tied to the movie. Which was great, actually. That was a pretty interesting plot point. I was like, whoa. And no, I didn't I know like you the don't like the, the book, but the movie. I didn't like the Flashpoint Paradox. No. Okay. I, I, I wasn't a big fan. I mean, because I hated the book. And the movie is the yeah. book. It was actually a pretty good one for one translation, but man, I did not like that story. Like overall, the movie itself wasn't bad. It's just uh, the story was stupid. But of the of the but how, how did you feel about the tie-in to uh, How to Pay? I felt like it was a good tie-in. I, I felt like it was a very good tie-in. It, it felt like because number one that. That part of, uh, what you call it, of the Flashpoint Paradox kind of made yeah. me upset a little bit. Because how did that happen to Zoom? How did Batman sneak up on Zoom? Yeah, so, you know, I'm glad they tied it in and they didn't try to retcon it. So at least they stuck by their guns. He's like, yo, I got yeah. shot in the head. And then Zoom's death in the movie made sense because he was in a different timeline and he just disappears. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Okay, that, that makes actual sense. It was pretty good. And also, it actually it it uh, made a, a Zoom fight plausible. Fighting Zoom versus the Suicide Squad, I mean... Yeah, they had they had to handicap you know. Zoom. Yeah. yeah. Because... One of my friends actually pointed out, why is Zoom running like a little bitch? Yeah. Because and I was I noticed that during the movie I was like he's got to be weakened or something, and um, yeah he was weakened. It was explained too. It was explained well enough. I got shot in the head in another timeline is a good enough explanation for me. So, and yeah, he's trying to keep himself together the entire movie, and it went pretty well. It was definitely something I didn't expect them to do. I was like, how is Zoom going to tie into fighting the Suicide Squad? Because Zoom is known to fight the entire Justice League on its own. So, uh, they made that make sense. At least for the, you know, New 52 animated. So, no, yeah. this, this is definitely my favorite of all. I mean, yeah, movies. even Deadshot pointed out like, He's, he would have killed why us is all. he slow? He would he would have killed us all not by now. Exactly. You know? So, Overall, this is my favorite of the new Fifty Two animated movies. I give it a pass. I am in the greens. Yeah, this is this is definitely a step up. I'm looking forward to their new animated projects from this point. I don't know what's coming up next, though. What what is coming up? That super Superman movie. Remember? Oh my god! That yeah, it looks horrible. <sighs> you got to get rid of them somehow. Well, that'll be for another podcast. But just oh my god, quick passing an old Superman story again. But go ahead. Just you know, just a quick glimpse of what that podcast is gonna be like. Uh, the animation looks like crap. Like it does. Flat the out. story looks like crap. The story is the same. How can you have a faithful adaption yet use new Fifty Two characters? I think and a new 52 storyline. It's because of Superman Reborn and Death of Superman uh, in the current comic books. Because they had to get rid of New 52 Superman somehow. Yeah. So I guess they're going to get rid of this one and have a new one show up. I don't know what they're going to do. I'm I, I hope that happens. worried, actually. Give them back the trunks. Yeah. Like I said, some of these shots look like crap. It looks like actual... Like there's a there's a shot with Doomsday running towards a cop, and they just skip frames. And I'm gonna put it on the screen here uh, for those who are watching the video. It, they just skip frames, and it looks. And just awkward. so you know, 
it it, it will actually be a part one. Yeah, part Reign two of the will be Superman. called just yeah, Reign of the Superman. Men, Yay. sorry, Reign of, Reign the, of Superman. the Superman. So we're gonna get Eradicator, uh, Cyborg Superman, Superboy, and Steel. So hopefully played by Sack. If only they can. If Lil Yachty can play the Green Lantern, Sack can come back and play Steel. Maybe. I mean, they had enough money to get Will Smith, so... Either way, uh, that was Cosmic Source. I'm the host, King Grimm. With your boy, Linwood Storm, a.k.a. Electronic Jack. And we're gonna sign out now. I love you all dearly.